I understand that your drive to, for instance, succeed in the art world may have largely disappeared because that is an egoic impulse to be successful, to be recognized, etc. So I completely understand that that would fall away. But it's not necessary for your love of painting to fall away. Because painting is a, an activity that lends itself so readily to what we are speaking of here. I mean, if you were a I learned my lesson at the Buckland Hall retreat last year when I said something like, um, I'm sure nobody here watches professional boxing on television, but then I gave an analogy about boxing, and it turned out there were three professional boxers in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just about to say, well, imagine, for instance, that you, uh, that you um, were a butcher or you worked in a slaughterhouse that might be a, a profession that was a little difficult to align with this understanding. But then I thought, no, don't say that, because you never know that there, there may be somebody that in here that works in a slaughterhouse. Or, so so um, erase that. <laughs> and I, I won't give any examples, but there are some activities or professions that it would be, let's say, challenging to align them with this perspective, whereas as an artist, uh, being an artist is, is, it is so, so easy to align the activity, of, in your case being a painter, with, with uh, what we're speaking of here. Yeah, my sister is a painter, my youngest sister, very good painter. I gave her a, a commission recently, well actually it was a while ago, and uh, she's a, a very, very good uh, landscape painter and still life painter. She paints with oils, very, always very small, so I gave her this commission to paint three paintings of the same landscape. So the first painting, uh, I asked her to paint the landscape as if it were from the conventional perspective, it is a collection of objects made out of stuff called matter. So just use it, paint the landscape, see the landscape as one would conventionally see it, and paint what you see. And then in the second painting, recognize that all you are actually seeing is light. You're not really seeing objects, you're just seeing light, and paint the light that you see. And then the third painting was recognize that the only experience you are having is seeing. It's all you can be sure about. You don't know that there's a landscape there or a world or light. Or all you know is the experience of seeing. Paint the experience of seeing. So that was like a kind of uh, self-inquiry for painters. <laughs> of the same landscape. Of the same landscape, or in your case, the same portrait, or the same still life. Or, or so, And this is what Cezanne was doing. It's exactly what Cezanne was doing. He said, everything we, everything we see vanishes. For, he said, the world vanishes, it falls apart. by which he meant all we know of the world is perception and perceptions are always disappearing. Everything we see vanishes, falls apart. Nature is always the same and yet nothing in her that appears to us lasts. So then he presents this problem. Nature is always the same and yet at the same time nothing in her that appears to us, nothing in nature that appears lasts. Therefore what can be always the same if everything we see disappears? 
And then he said, our art must render the thrill of her permanence. The thrill of that which is always the same, along with her elements, along with that which always changes. So he's saying, as an artist, you take that which always changes and you use it to indicate that which remains the same. And then he said, our art must Our art must give us the thrill of her permanence along with her changes, along with her elements, along with her changes. It must give us the taste of nature's eternity. So that he, he was, he, Cezanne was unusually explicit for an artist. He said, what I'm trying to do in my paintings is to give people a taste of nature's eternity, to, of that which is eternal in nature, that which doesn't change. And art is, a painter is such a, it's such a beautiful medium to do that with. You don't have to give up your, your love of painting. Just make your painting serve your love of truth. But in my case, I often feel that I never can arrive there. I never succeed. No, Cezanne felt the same thing. He was frustrated. Uh, all artists are frustrated. <laughs> 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 you, you, you're, uh, an artist is never, never happy because, because uh, you always feel, oh, I can do it better. I can get closer. I can. Uh, there's always this sense. Uh, yeah, and that confuses me, because that. No, just g get used to it. It's the state that an artist lives in. <laughs> it's just so that you're coming closer. You're trying. You see, you are trying to, in the same way that I'm trying to speak about something which is unspeakable, and I always feel that I fail to a greater or lesser extent. I want my words to come as close as possible, but they never really come close enough. So you, as an artist, will, are trying to make, in your case, it's a, not a verbal representation, it's a visual representation of something which cannot be represented because it has no form. You are trying to give people a taste of nature's eternity, knowing that you can never put it into form, and yet, for some crazy reason, there is this impulse to keep doing it, to keep trying to put into form that which is formless. And you'll never succeed, but don't let that feeling of never succeeding uh, prevent you from continually trying. Because in the attempt to express the formless, what the objects that we make, the words we speak, the paintings we make, whatever it is, somehow contain this magical quality. They, they have this potency, this power, and this is the power of a true work of art. But although it can never represent reality, it has the power within it to evoke reality, as Cezanne said, to give us the taste of nature's eternity. So don't worry about being frustrated, just keep going. But how was it for you, you as an artist? Well, um, it was frustrating. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, it was frustrating, I but never... You, but, but your love for create creation uh, in the material uh, yes. what you did did it disappear did it no happen? it transformed itself because it, uh, as you uh, you probably know i was making bowls and to begin with i was spending days and days and days dr drawing with a sharpened needle not a regular needle wasn't sharp enough a sharpened needle drawing lines like this over these huge bowls they would take several days at a time and one day when i was drawing these lines, the, uh, just the idea spontaneously came, start writing, instead of just the lines, start writing. So the next bowls had poems written all over them, front and then, and then so I, I then started writing words and uh, on, on bowls, and I had the, the idea, this naive idea came to me a couple of years before I stopped making pots. As I was writing on the bowls, the bowls were getting wider and more, I was pushing the bowls to the and often they would collapse either in the making or, or in the kiln. I was pushing it to the limit, making them as fine and open as is possible and then covering them in words. And I wanted, I had this idea, it just came to me one day in the studio, I would like to make bowls just out of words. Beautiful. I, I would like the bowls to, I want the, the bowls to, and I saw this beautiful exhibition in London of a, of a Spanish sculptor, I can't remember his name, who had taken the Song of Solomon. Do you know the Song of Solomon in the Bible? It's a beautiful poem. 
and he had made letters, little three-inch letters, stamped out of aluminium, and he had drilled a hole in each one. And he had he, he suspended these letters, just letters suspended on invisible wire. You w walked into this huge gallery on the south bank, and there were sheets of of words, just letters suspended, suspended, turning, moving, like like sheets of words suspended in space and I remember and they were enormous they were half the size of, of this wall all and the, each sheet was at a different plane and the light was hitting them so you went in and there were just there were just letters words floating in emptiness and I, and I went into the gallery and I thought oh, th that's what I want to do in my bowls I would like to make bowls just out of words I'd like the the material materiality of the bowl to evaporate and for the just the contents of the words to be the form of the bowl and strangely that's what I'm doing now yeah. 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 I didn't notice it to begin with I had this thought two years before I st stopped my studio and that in the end the pot it just it, it kind of evaporated and I started writing and speaking and then then a couple of years later, I realized, okay, and I am making forms out of words now. It was a, so there wasn't, a, there was just a, the, the, my love of this truth just dictated the form of my work. It changed it from the inside. So from the outside, people said, oh, Rupert's no longer working as an artist. I never had that feeling. I had the feeling I was always doing the same thing. Yeah, and, and still uh, do. And still, yeah. and, and I, you have that, did you say you had that feeling? Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I say you still do. And I, Yes, yeah. yes. So, so just find a way to marry your love of truth with your love of beauty. They are the same love. And painting is, is very susceptible to the love of truth. It is so, it is relatively easy to impregnate your, your work as a painter with your love of truth. So just infuse your work. Forget about the art world and being successful in the art world. It, it's, it means nothing. Yeah, that's the difficult part. No, but for, 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 for an artist, the, 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 the real success is, is, when you, uh, is when you feel that what you make comes close to the reality that you're trying to convey. And that, for an artist, gives you such exquisite pleasure. It's better than sex. It's better than it, it, it's the for for an artist. It's the to 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 feel that what you've made, or to see that what you make somehow somehow conveys the taste that you are trying to evoke it is is your reward as an artist. It's not recognition in the art world. Recognition in the art world means nothing. It's nothing compared to this to this. Um, exquisite exquisite pleasure you get from from making something that you feel gives people a taste of nature's eternity so i would encourage you to keep going thank you